Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the stars, baby. Do it. Wiki. <laughs> You've got you totally Sierra just reminded me of like mom opening the door and being like, Hey, hey sweetie, it's really time to wake up. Come on, honey. <laughs> no rush. <laughs> breakfast is on the table. Come on. Anyway, proverbial uh, breakfast. Happy 2024, even though we're a couple of weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are here for like a new kind of mini series, which is really exciting. And I know that yeah. over on Discord, we've been chatting about this. And I'm, yeah, we're bringing in some Myers Briggs to astrology, which is something I have always been thinking about whenever I ask people, like when I first got into astrology, I was seeing the overlaps. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, I'm a Sagittarius ENFP. And oh my gosh, this person, blah, 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 you know, like making all these comparisons, but we're like gonna look into the different Myers-Briggs types and kind of, you know, dive into the astrology that could go along with it. Yeah, and if you don't know what Myers-Briggs is, it's a personality test. So there's so many like disclaimers I wanna make when we're talking about this because, for me, I love astrology because I don't have control over where the stars were when I was born. Whereas with the Myers-Briggs, your your answers can change over time. Like even in Discord, our yes. patrons have said, oh my God, I just got a new result that I like never would have imagined that I would get, like something I'd never gotten before. So it is a personality test. So results can change. So first off, I just suggest go take that test and uh, let us know what your Myers-Briggs personality is and make sure that you listen to the episode for you. Um, and then another thing is that I wanted to disclaim with this series is um, anybody can have any personality test and any placements in their chart. So yes. what I, I mean, this is a brand new mini series, so um, we don't know fully what it's going to look like, but what I imagine it looking like is we're going to talk about all the personality types, and then we're going to discuss where, like what placements we see that as, or archetypically how they resonate with certain signs more than others. Uh, and then we're actually going to bring up some charts for people who gave us their example through our Google form. So also you can find that on our Instagram. The link is in the bio for like the questionnaire kind of vibe, same as the Venus. But instead it's let us know your Myers-Briggs personality, give us your chart, and then let us know any insights that you have about those two connecting to each other. So I just want to make those two little disclaimers before we start. Yeah, I like that, you know, that is something with I was always obsessed with personality tests and everything. And I mean, Same. partially I millennial generation. Queen. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> <laughs> like I need to know what kind of grilled cheese I am right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Love a good personality test. And I did like when I did Myers Briggs, I definitely got into that for a while. And that would be like a question that I would ask people, like, oh, what's your Myers Briggs? I'm an ENFP. And hmm. now and I also, I did a little bit of the, oh my gosh, what's it called? The Enneagrams. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know that we have a lot of people out there doing human design and that does incorporate astrology, but there's like a whole nother element to it. And for Myers-Briggs, you're so right. Like, I also think that it is easy to skew your results based on what you think you should <laughs> be answering versus what you think is true for you. You know, yeah. it's, and that's why we love astrology, like you said, because uh, here's the time and date and place and it is what it is. There's no yeah. like, well, maybe <laughs> and you but, are this yeah. rising. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what yeah. makes it so like, I don't know, it feels like such a relief. And you know, there's this is what it is. And then mm -hmm. let's dive into that. But with Myers-Briggs, I, yeah. I don't know about you, but I've taken it I've taken it multiple times and I've always got the same results. And I thought, like, like I said, I'm an ENFP and I thought that it would have, which like if anybody who knows Myers-Briggs and knows me, like no surprise, no shocker, here I am. But like, I feel like mm -hmm. every time I recently, I've become so much more introverted than extroverted. And I was wondering if it has shifted and it's like, no, <laughs> I'm just an ENFP. So I'm somebody who every time I take it, it has just a been tired the same ENFP. thing. <laughs> I'm just a tired ENFP, you know? Oh, man. But yeah, every time that I take it, it's ENFP. Whereas, like you said, uh, some of our Patreon, uh, or, you know, on Discord through Patreon, you know, we were chatting about it and some patrons shared that it has changed over time. And I do think that 
that it depends on how you answered at the beginning, how your life has changed, how, you know, and I also think that could depend on your placements too. Yeah. And like, which one you're tapping into more too, you know, like if you have very uh, contrasting placements, sometimes you're leaning into one more than the other. Like I have Aries and Pisces placements and sometimes I'm leaning more into my Aries. Sometimes I'm leaning more into my Pisces. And then sometimes that Scorpio just like comes up too. So it really does depend on what stage of your life you're in. And I also think it depends on like answering these questions because they're such big life questions. It's like, are you answering as the person that you hope to be or that you want to be or the person that you are right now in this phase of trying to get to where you want to be um both of which I think are totally valid and I think it'd be kind of interesting to answer completely honestly with all that self-awareness of how you would actually behave in the situations that they prompt and then to do it again as what you would hope you would do and then to see the difference between the two and kind of maybe heal through like where you are versus where you want to be that could be kind of a cool exercise that is really interesting. I'm also thinking about just people's rising signs too. Like you identify mm-hmm. as an introvert, but you are a Leo rising. Mm-hmm. And so many people mm-hmm. who meet you, especially when you're at markets, I feel like they would be very surprised to learn <laughs> yeah. that you're an introvert. Yeah. And I think that that's something yeah. that comes into play too with Myers-Briggs and with astrology is that we do present our rising sign as the first thing we present. And so that's mm-hmm. why in the opposite way, nobody's shocked to learn I'm a Sagittarius because I'm a Sagittarius rising as well. But, mm-hmm. you know, and anyways, I think that I think that it just it's it's very cool to compare it to astrology. So I'm really looking forward to seeing seeing how that happens. And we're going to, like Mimi said, give some chart examples. And we are breaking the series into four different parts because there are 16 different Myers-Briggs types and they're broken up into four different categories. So we're going to do four episodes of the series and yeah you want to tell us a little Mm -hmm. bit more about that and we're starting off with the analysts um but let's so there are 16 different results based off of four i don't know terms so it's either introverted or extroverted so that first letter is either i or e secondly it's intuitive versus sensing so that's n and s and then there's feeling versus thinking which is f and t and then judging versus prospecting, or I've also seen perceiving. I've so seen then perceiving. J or P at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen, yeah. So I noticed there were both of these. And just for um, this entire series, the best source that I found for the information about each individual personality is literally 16personalities.com. They have the legit test too. Like it's a very great source. It has a lot of great information. I'm, I broke it down or tried to condense it um, in a way that we still got all the facets of each of the personalities but there's just so much more on their website too so if you're like oh my gosh this is me i need to know more there is more um so starting off just the analysts these are the first four of uh, the 16 personalities and they all have n and t in their makeup so they're both intuitive and thinking which they're pretty rare because of that i think like when you think about intuitive you would think that they're very feeling as well like you think of pisces like feeling into the energies of everything but then they're thinking so there's that more rational logical mindset too and this to me the analysts seem so intelligent because they're the ones who intuitively know things without yes. having to, you know, study. This is like the person like Mercury in the eighth house who just picks up information because it was around them, like within three miles of them. And they just know the information. Very, very smart. They're reason based, very logical thinkers. And this quote from 16 Personalities their intuitive personality trait energizes their imaginations, helping them to come up with creative strategies and motivating them to explore things deeply, whether that's an intellectual pursuit, a new interest, or even a crazy scheme or thought experiment. And I love that thought experiment because it's very mm. like Mercury, Jupiter, expansive, like big thinking, very smart. I love that N and T together, the intuitive and thinking, and like, we'll get into it with the examples because I have a very close friend and my husband that are in this category. And I find it fascinating, like you said, because it is 
a very logical mind, a very logical mind, but it's not at the same time as black and white as all that, because there is an intuitive yeah. element to it. And that is so, I think it, it's really intriguing because when I am in conversations with this type of energy, as somebody who's like an NP, so I have like the, I, I don't have the thinking part to me. I have the, or sorry, the FP, like I have the, the feeling and intuitive part we overlap and i appreciate the logic that this type of you know personality brings and they are open enough to the intuitive feeling part that i bring because we overlap with that intuitive and i love the idea of having logic and that thinking on top of the intuition mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really fascinating and i think for a lot of um the analysts I really do see a lot of air placements. Like it mm -hmm. seems very like Aquarius to me. Yes. Um, it seems very Gemini too, like collection of information, fascination with, uh, with facts and logic and, um, and not really incorporating emotion into their, like, it's not a factor for them. So yes. it really does give like air signs. I really get air sign with some earth because there is a mm -hmm, definitely proof yeah, exactly. And there is a personality type that I'm like, wow, this is so Capricorn. Yeah. But so more information on them. They love ideas and speculation more than the realities of follow through. So there's kind of some mutability there that gave me some Gemini energy. And then they're innately curious, also lone wolves. And then they're socially selective. So they don't like to be surrounded by people they they would rather be surrounded by one person they like than a bunch of non-quality people and they're sort of like a judgmental because it's so fact-based it's like oh yes you are not worthy to me so therefore I do not want your company kind of thing and forgetting again that that can emotionally affect others <laughs> yeah yeah because we're not talking about like uh f here the feeling you know we're mm -hmm. talking about yeah. the t which is the thinking and yeah. so and the that fact. we can often see with air signs or with i'm thinking a lot of earth placements uh like virgo capricorn mm -hmm. you know it's it's it seems like the you know like it's not it's, it's not personal of. it's business you know that kind of thing yeah. like it's and it's like well it is personal yeah, to me. Aries <laughs> in there too yeah and so I'm like well i'm taking it personally yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Please Don't Skip This Ad for our awesome Patreon group. <laughs> we would love to have you guys as a part of our community. We are chatting with people on our Discord. We have a whole second podcast over there, and it's a really, really good time. Yeah, if you like the vibe of The Stars Made Me Do It, you'll definitely love Transits and Tangents, which you can find on Spotify and sign up through Spotify. It takes you directly to Patreon. There are three tiers that you can choose from. You could be a pop star for just three bucks. It's basically a cheap diner coffee where you just get access to the Discord community and you can chat with us at any point. We're there day and night. It's a lot. And then you can get episodes five days early every week, too. So you can hear the episodes that come out on Sunday on Tuesday every week. And then you can also just support the Firestorm, which we would love. Our second tier is the rock stars for six bucks. Consider this like a Starbucks coffee. Again, you can join us on Discord. You get early access, but you also get exclusive episodes every other week. So you get 50% access to all of the second podcast. And then our last tier, the third tier, it's our superstars, the most popular. It's only nine bucks a month. This is like your favorite local coffee house with all the bells and whistles. You get the Discord, you get early access, and you get 100% of the exclusive episodes every week. You can also guest on an episode if you want. Uh, where we do some analysis, which we're basically talking about on Discord all the time anyway. We have such a fun Discord community, such a fun Patreon community. It is really like 
all the all the behind the scenes chat that we get to do. We talk about fun, different analysis that maybe we'll do one day on the podcast. But we also get to know you. And that way, when we're going mm-hmm. over the transits of the week and we're talking about the astrological weather report, it's not just about us, it's about you. And so if you're interested in how the planets are actually affecting you on a personal level, then this is really the place to join us. Also, we just, <laughs> it's a lot of chatty good times and it's a little, it's a little more silly. And so we got super educated of what's going on and we have silly get to know us really like we're a community over there so check us out we'd love okay. to have you and we do have free trial going on if you'd like to dabble and see what it's like yeah seven days free trial so go join us on patreon.com slash the stars made me do it and now back to the show do you want to start us off on this first personality Yes. And so basically, like Mimi just gave an umbrella, you know, information for the analysts, and now we're getting into type. And so the first type of the analyst is the architect, which is the INTJ. So introverted, intuitive thinking and judging. And so a quote here is they are rational and quick witted. Architects pride themselves on their ability to think for themselves, not to mention their uncanny knack for seeing right through phoniness and hypocrisy. But because their minds are never at rest, architects may struggle to find people who can keep up with their nonstop analysis of everything around them. And that to me is like, okay, it's just mercury energy. And it feels like- Yeah, very mercury. (laughs) Like Gemini Virgo, but you know- Yes. That's feeling very Gemini Virgo to me. Absolutely. And then we also have, in their quest to find better ways of doing things, they aren't afraid to break the rules or risk disapproval. In fact, they rather enjoy it. What's up, Aquarius? You know? <laughs> that feels mm-hmm. so, so Aquarius. There's also some Aries energy in here. I think like the Aries Aquarius lone wolf vibe. And Ooh. also like the determination behind both of those signs yes. can really show up here. Yeah. Architects are independent to the core, want to shake off other people's expectations and pursue their own ideas. That goes a lot lot with what you were just saying. And architects Mm -hmm. don't just learn new things for show. They genuinely enjoy expanding the limits of their knowledge. Oh, that feels so mercurial and also very like Uranian, you know, like it feels like that, that just I want more knowledge. And it's because I'm I'm thirsty for it. (laughs) You know, I'm really wanting more. And it makes me so curious about like, if somebody is this INTJ and they have a lot of Gemini or Virgo placements, like those are going to be expanded upon way more. Like maybe they won't care to break the rules so much as INTJ is, is usually want to do. Like maybe they're more just focused on collecting information and expanding based off off of that information. Whereas if there's an architect who has a lot of Aries or Aquarius placements, like if they're super Aquarius, then that factor of the architect personality type is really coming through. You know, it's interesting to see how your astrology supports certain aspects of the personality. Yes, yes. And this is where I think that, I mean, uh, we can get into such like a a deep, deep hole when it comes to astrology. If it's like, is it because of your person? Is it because of your astrology that your life turned out the way it turned out? Mm-hmm. Or is it because the way your life is, is that animal, like it yeah. affects your astrology, you know, like that back and forth game. But I do think because a quote unquote personality test is so much more through choice, I think our environment has shaped a lot of that as well, you know, because there's going to be two people Mm -hmm. in the world that were born at the same time and have the same astrology, but did, are their home lives exactly the same? Is their environment exactly the same? You know, it just, those are kind of questions where I Mm -hmm. feel like some of this, like Like you said, can be, yeah, can be activated more than others, but I, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to look at, we've got two chart examples for this type and for Mm -hmm. INTJ and I'm excited to look at them because I found some cool overlaps. So for INTJ, our examples, we've got Caleb and Julie and I found this so interesting. I'm going to give their top three for each just, you know, to go over it from the beginning. Caleb we have is an Aquarius with a Virgo moon and Libra rising. Oh, wow. 
And then we have yeah, Julie, perfect. who is a Virgo sun, a Libra moon, and an Aquarius rising. And so we literally were talking oh, wow. about Aquarius and Virgo and just mercurial energy for this INTJ type. And both of our examples here have, have Aquarius and Virgo in their top three, which is really fascinating to me. And it seems like there is that social element that's present with Aquarius, with Libra. I, they both share Aquarius and Libra and Virgo. Like they have, you know, it's just, it's, it's wild. But there is the, the earthy part of it that Virgo that comes to mind of really literally analyzing something. This is like the analyst, like analyzing something. And the architect, it, it's very cool to see a social element coming to a very tangible creation because that feels like, you know, when you are building a building, like I'm thinking of an architect that is building, you know, a, a I don't know, a big skyscraper or business like office or something like that and you're not just building it for the building itself but for the purpose in which it's serving and i feel like that is where you can bring in those you know that libra that they both have here which is mm -hmm. kind of fun to think about that in the architect way but then i also wanted to bring in that both of these charts both of our people here have earth mercuries so when we think about mercury and how that's how we think and perceive mm -hmm. and communicate information go check out our mercury whole season if you haven't yet you know they we have caleb who has mercury in capricorn and julie who has mercury in virgo and I thought it was wow. really interesting Very what you said. thinking. Exactly. And what you mentioned earlier about somebody, for example, who has Mercury in Virgo in the eighth house. And mm -hmm. in, in Placidus, Julie has Mercury in Virgo in the seventh, but in whole sign, it would be the eighth. And I think that mm. that is really fun to think of that intuitive and thinking piece yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the logistic of collecting facts and information but doing it in a way that is just like by osmosis yeah yeah also i like the leap replacements because i do feel like this architect is a bit of a social um networker or collector like yes you know it collects people as their as like information holders mm -hmm. yeah and and I will say also that Caleb has uh, Mars and Gemini, which just plays again into that that mercurial energy that we mentioned here. And I love that just the top yeah. three, even if they weren't so freaking on point and overlapping just in a different order, but it's air, earth, air. That's wild. And so the fact that yeah. we have you know, ideas, 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 and let's ground them and let's make them tangible. But then yet we have, yeah. you know, everything that like we have the the moon being in Virgo for one of our examples. And when, like mm -hmm. our intuition, our intuitive energy comes from that moon. And there's something about that logic coming into the moon that it's it feels yeah. right when things make sense in that way. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is in whole sign, both of these people have their Mercury in water houses because yes. Caleb in whole sign has his Mercury in the fourth house, too. So thinking is just a very it's just very connected in their makeup. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, grounded grounded mercury earth mercury we want tangible results We're we're here to we've here to prove something we're not just here to say it or wonder about it we want tangible results but it's existing and flowing in this intuitive way where the reason i started looking at this in the per in the first place was because i had a feeling that this would be the right thing this would be mm -hmm. the answer i'd be seeking yeah. so freaking cool and then I wonder, and then the Aquarius too, because we have, you know, Aquarius specifically with the architect, it is very um, independent and very self-oriented. Like it's my ideas and I'm going to follow my ideas um, kind of thing. So it's fascinating that they both have Aquarius placements too. I really feel like Aquarius comes to play with what we, you know, what we just went over with INTJ about being independent and wanting to shake off other people's expectations, mm -hmm. pursuing their own ideas and, and 
having like a quest to find a better way of doing something and not being afraid to break the rules or risk disapproval that is so aquarian to me because mm -hmm. aquarius does not yeah. like they're not trying to conform <laughs> <laughs> they're they're trying Sorry, to do the I'm just opposite. thinking about the other day when I made a big decision and I was like, I'm not telling people because I'm not in the mood to be disapproved of right now. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Aries, but also my Aquarius descendant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Relatable. All right, that let's move on to the next analyst in the 16 personalities. And Okay, so we've got the logician, logician, which is INTP, so introvert, intuitive thinking, and perceiving. People with this personality type hardly ever stop thinking. From the moment they wake up, their minds buzz with ideas, questions, and insights. At times, they may even find themselves conducting full-fledged debates in their own heads. So again, this is like very Gemini Sagittarius spectrum, right? <laughs> they have a reputation for being pensive, detached, and a bit reserved. That is, until they try to train all of their mental energy on the moment or the person at hand, which can be a bit uncomfortable for everyone. But regardless of which mode they're in, logicians are introverts and tend to get tired out by extensive socializing. After a long day, they crave time alone to consult their own thoughts. So I feel like there's a little bit more layers here like the sense yeah. of reservation because they are introverted that gemini sag because they're air and fire signs they're quote-unquote masculine extrovert energy um but because this is an introverted personality type we get more maybe earthy watery to it you know being a little too sensitive to other people's energies and having to go within and I also, with the P, the only thing that's changed here, it's INTP as opposed to INTJ. And I know that from mm -hmm. what I have previously learned about J versus P is that J people will often like thrive with a schedule and with very um, regimented, like, this is when we do this one task. This is when we do this one thing. And P people are much more flowy when it comes to that type of area of life and i'm thinking mm -hmm. that you know with this this p like flowing it feels a little more mutable than maybe what we said before mm -hmm. with jay yeah but also because yeah it, it seems like they need to recharge a little bit more than jays do from just yeah. the difference between these two because it seems like it is more taxing for them all of this perceiving as opposed to just putting this is what it is moving on it seems like because it is more free flow it's a little bit more draining you know i'm curious because for me the j versus p like judging versus perceiving it feels almost like the difference between inserting yourself in a situation versus just bearing witness to a situation oh and which one is which? J is inserting? Judging would be inserting yourself. Yeah. Mm. And then perceiving is you're simply observing. But I could be wrong. I need to look into that more. Like I said, this is the beginning of the series. So by the end of the series, we're going to be Myers-Briggs experts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue on. Few things energize logicians like the opportunity to swap ideas or enjoy a lively debate with another curious inquiring soul. Logicians shouldn't always be held at their word, Gemini. They rarely mean to be dishonest, <laughs> but with their active minds, they sometimes overflow with ideas and theories that they haven't thought through all the way. They may change their mind on anything from their weekend plans to a fundamental moral principle without ever realizing that they'd appeared to have made up their mind in the first place. In addition, they're often happy to play devil's advocate in order to keep an interesting discussion humming along. So again, okay. it's like, Gemini. oh, this is just for fun. Yeah, this is just for the fun of playing mind like games and, and getting on a thought train kind of situation. Not so much being like, oh, you're emotionally attached to the thing that we're talking about. Uh, like that's foreign i love the they may basically change their mind without even realizing that they made up their mind in the first place and like we'll touch exactly. on that because the example we're going to give is my husband's but like that rings true that rings true <laughs> to me <laughs> yeah yeah it's like not fixed and 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 very airy so it's like very very uh gemini energy here yeah yeah 
people with this personality type want to understand everything in the universe, but one area in particular tends to mystify them, human nature. As their name suggests, logicians feel most at home in the realm of logic and rationality. As a result, they can find themselves baffled by the illogical, irrational ways that feelings and emotions influence people's behavior, including their own. So oh, whereas man. the architect had a lot more almost nuance and I could see like six different signs in the architect when it comes to the logician it really does feel Gemini with like some architect or not architect but Aquarius wings yeah <laughs> yeah it really does and it's also like again this is an N there is intuitive and there's something about it where as opposed to in mm -hmm. the architect where we're like oh we're using this intuition to think and then judge it's like now we have intuition and we're yeah. thinking and perceiving it and i feel like there's an element of confusion that comes in in a little bit less black and white because they're like wait a minute where do feelings come into play with all of this? If I have, yeah. you know, this like life, information. Why, why, why put feelings in there? It's easier without feelings. And it's like, yeah, but some people can't control that they have feelings about situations. And I love that it's mentioned their own feelings too, where they like don't, uh, you know, it's like mm -hmm. this disconnect because it's like, wait, but I know the logic behind it. Why am I feeling the other way? Because feelings are not logical there in you know their feelings and so oh man i mm -hmm. i love this so much it's so interesting to dive into it obviously when you have like a a personal connection but the example that we have for this one is my husband and he is a aquarius sun gemini moon and scorpio rising and so i love that yeah and like, again that moon is in the eighth house the moon is in the eighth house exactly and in whole sign his mars would also be in the eighth house because it's in gemini and and he's mm. yeah an aquarius sun and the the interesting thing about the feelings that we've talked about and brought up is so we've got moon in the eighth but then scorpio rising here too there is an investigative quality with the eighth house and with scorpio there is a want to understand feelings but then there is this gemini energy and this aquarian energy and especially aquarian energy is so removed from feelings because they have this detached perspective they have this far away perspective they are mm -hmm. the water bearer they're the one that's pouring out the water and observing it from afar they're not the one that's in that water and in that emotion but so there's an awareness of the emotion but almost like not the connection mm -hmm. to the emotion and so there's a confusion there of i'm so aware that this comes into play but how the heck does this come into play yeah what you just said there about detached that's i think another thing where i see judging versus per perceiving being attached versus detached because with the architect the architect is attached to the results of the conversations that they're having whereas mm. the logician here is not attached at all they'll just play the opposite side because it's it's interesting not because because they're, it does, they don't really care about the result there again it's sort of that like ego being put into play or like put inserting themselves into a situation versus just putting information out there as an experiment i also like how the gemini that you mentioned the gemini that we have with my you know with my husband because in uh in his chart he's also got like a whole stellium going on in the third house which is gemini's house mm. so there's extra gemini mm. energy here but we have like this gemini can lead to that unintentional misinformation that was mentioned and also mm -hmm. the ability to change their mind and the need for information and talking about it it's not enough like there is a yeah. social element here uh, as well as with the first type that we talked about but there is something about you know people being a source of information and wanting to talk about the information and then also just being so in your headspace not even realizing that you've made a decision on this that might have been because of how you were feeling about it but not having yeah. that connection to the feeling it's like oh wait i decided this was right why did i decide this was right i guess it felt right at the time but then it's like whoa how did feelings come into play for this it's so interesting yeah 
it's really interesting because with the um, architect, you know, with Mercury being in the eighth house, it was like, oh, my thoughts or how uh, how my thoughts came to be or how the information I know came to be is elusive, but I know it. And then mm -hmm. with, you know, your husband with the moon being in the eighth house, it's like my emotions are elusive to me. Therefore, I don't see that they are a factor in making decisions. So it's really, exactly. really fascinating with the intuitive, this N letter in the personality types to see how many eighth and twelfth house placements come up. Yeah, I really like that the from what you read, the logicians feel most at home in the realm of logic and rationality and being baffled by mm -hmm. illogical and irrational ways, because I really do see that with my husband. He is he feels so much more comfortable in logical realms. I mean, that's where we have that, you know, mm -hmm. those air placements. And he also has a Capricorn Mercury. And so again, we have that Mercury mm -hmm. being in a grounded earth air, sign. Air, air. Exactly. Yeah. But then feeling baffled by illogical and irrational ways that feelings and emotions influence people's behavior, including their own, you can see there's almost like this, uh, it's an just not understanding not being able to totally bridge the 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 gap there but it, like it's, it's almost an understanding that they can't understand they're like i don't get where that comes from or i didn't even understand mm -hmm. that that was coming from there because there's something that they function in this logical grounded way but yet it's it just seems a little more smoke and mirrors of where all their intuition is coming from as opposed to the first one it seems more like the the intuition is coming more into play with the logic because it's like yes well that's what felt right and so i looked into it more i feel like with the first one the architect it's also ego is coming into play where it's like this came from me whereas with the logician it's like it just came <laughs> this is information yeah. <laughs> it's not so attached to me yeah <laughs> that's funny you're right so interesting. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, we've got the commander. Oh my gosh, isn't that like... Okay, I was about to go off on a tangent. <laughs> I was about to go off on such a tangent. I'm like, have you seen the movie Sky High? The commander in Jetstream? Anyways, if you have, send me a message. The commander, ENTJ. <laughs> okay, so basically the difference between like these four types, we've got INTJ, INTP, and now we're gonna just flip that first letter around. We now have ENTJ and ENTP. So for ENTJ, extroverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging, the commander. If there's anything commanders love, it's a good challenge, big or small, and they firmly believe that given enough time and resources, they can achieve any goal. This quality makes people with the commander personality type brilliant, brilliant entrepreneurs and their ability to think strategically and hold a long term focus while executing each step of their plans with determination and precision make them powerful business leaders. I bet money this is my dad. I will report back. If there's anyone commanders respect, it's someone who is able to stand up to them intellectually, who is able to act with a precision and quality equal to their own. Commander personalities have a particular skill in recognizing the talents of others, and this helps in both their team building efforts since no one, no matter how brilliant, can do everything alone, and to keep commanders from displaying too much arrogance and con condensa condensation. Condensation? Condensation. <laughs> I'm like... Condescension. Okay, I'm like, condensation is the water Don't display on... too much condensation. <laughs> I can't say this word. How do you say this word? Condescension. Condescension. My brain couldn't get it out and still can't. Okay. However, <laughs> they also have a particular skill in calling out others' failures with a chilling degree of insensitivity. And this is where commanders really start to run into trouble. Okay, so yeah, Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorn, Virgo, and Aries. That's yep. what I see this yep. like archetype top. I as. I'm gonna also throw Aquarius in there because of the ability of seeing things from a perspective of how everything, you know, everybody can everybody has a role to play. Everybody can, you know, we're like like a humanity element, but, but then that's the Capricorn how I see Capricorn, because they're delegators. Yeah. I, I guess I see you know, it more like they're leaders. As... They see people's strengths. Yes. Yes, I do. 
to finish off this uh, a little bit about the commanders is that the commanders distance from their emotions is especially public and felt directly by a much broader swath of people, especially in a professional environment. Commanders will simply crush the sensitivities of those they view as inefficient, incompetent or lazy. Um, people with commander bosses, you okay? You okay? No, no, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I really, I do okay. think that this could very much be my dad. Um, I, I definitely see Capricorn energy because challenge and entrepreneur and long-term focus and mm -hmm. plans with determination and precision, powerful business leaders. Come on, like Capricorning the fuck out here and also respect. And that's how I can see with Aries and Capricorn yeah. with like, you know, you better respect me leader type position. And T I, I really yeah. liked the being able to recognize having a skill and recognizing the talents of others, because I do think that that is such a, I think that's such a skill when you can say, Hey, you do this yeah. really well. And you could be in this piece to help everything work better together. And I really like the mention of nobody can do everything alone because, and that, that does come back to that Capricorn stereotype and just archetype of, you know, it's lonely at the top, but also if there was nobody else there, you couldn't be at the top of anything. You know, you have to have mm -hmm. other people make everything function. And when you can find the best you know, person for the job. I also feel like this, this comes into play. I just, I have to confirm that this is my dad, but I remember my dad saying that in university, he would specifically choose the teachers over the subjects or over the classes that he would take because he knew that certain teachers were the better teachers for his personality type. And that feels like the same energy mm -hmm. to me as choosing a person based on their skill for the job. It's like choosing a teacher based on their teaching skill for the person Their it seems style. very oh. yeah, yeah yeah i also like the idea of virgo being into the mix because i think with the like cap and aries it's so cardinal that there's almost no follow-through but with the commanders it seems like there is follow-through like they have goals and they know how to achieve them they know the steps to take to actually achieve them yeah and that the the detail oriented nature of virgo of placing the right cogs in the wheel you know like placing things where they will mm -hmm. function best it definitely does feel like there's virgo energy there yeah for this type of our since this is our first part series we don't have any chart examples that were shared yet for this type so what i did was pulled some celebrities and i thought we'd just go over and yes. celebrities famous people and I am a really, I'm very curious to talk about one of them, but okay. So for ENTJ, this commander, we have FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, like love that. I mean, it's somebody whose name is, I'm just thinking like here in Paris, that's a, a Metro stop in Paris is FDR is a Metro stop. <laughs> you know, like people around the world know this yeah. name commanding, you know, very, uh, it seems like there is a, a glory yeah. there somehow, you know, but not just because of it's not like a royalty it's like a there's legacy uh, legacy exactly and this one i love so much we have alexander hamilton which question number one how do they know how do they know that because myers-briggs was not a thing mm. when alexander hamilton was alive but i will say <laughs> yeah. that alexander hamilton is a capricorn sun and moon and shout shout out way back when to oh, a really early yeah. stars maybe do it episode with the hamilton Go listen if you want more info. But Alexander Hamilton is a Capricorn sun and moon. And also, I remember speculating mm. just on my own. I'm like, what would his rising be? And I determined that just based on the information that I had, that I would guess him to be an Aries rising. And the creator of huh. the Hamilton musical is uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and he's a Capricorn sun and moon Aries rising. And so I just find that shit fascinating. But like Alexander oh gosh, Hamilton is really isn't... Funny. Isn't that insane? But I need to tangent about that, that another is. day. But Alexander Hamilton, like, <laughs> yeah, was just had an ability of seeing a way that things worked and also put things into place that couldn't be undone afterwards. You know, like such a really commanded the presence, you know, his he was noticed. He inserted himself very much so. Anyways, I think that mm -hmm. that was a great example, especially with that Capricorn energy we're talking about. And then mm -hmm. we also have. Queen Elizabeth I being a ENTJ. These top three all being like very 
political or like public figures. Very exactly. Public. And then uh, George Clooney, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey, who I know is also a Capricorn. Just a bunch of alphas. I know. Just, this whole list is just a bunch of alphas. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl Sagan, astronomer, and Adele. Mm-hmm. These people yeah, command alpha energy. Yeah, it's really alpha energy, and they all really in their own legacies. ways. But legacy, exactly. So very, very fascinating. I thought, that, I thought that was very cool. And I, I do know that we have um, for Alexander Hamilton, Queen Elizabeth, and this is just off the top of my head. I didn't go into everything, but Jim Carrey and Adele are all Earth signs. I do know that. I'm not positive for yes. the rest of them, but that's just something that again comes Isn't down Jim to Jim Carrey this... a Scorpio or doesn't he have Scorpio? Oh, Jim Carrey, I think is a Scorpio rising. I believe he is a So we've Capricorn. got that intuitive. But yeah, but we've got that, yeah, intuitive nature. And I don't know. I just, I thought that it was very, I mean, this is the commander and these are very commanding presences. You yes. don't, none of these people are like, you know, in the corner of a room, they are commanding the presence of the room. Yeah. And here we have like the same example of like extroverts, like they are seen very publicly. Yes. And they, yes. And they like to be around others. Yes, we have, we have now turned to extrovert territory. And it makes so much sense that but again, we have to think of the astrology piece of it, too, because like we, I used you as an example, I would think my first impression of you would be that you are an extrovert. So I think that, you know, also, mm-hmm. even just in my <laughs> just seeing in a public way, Queen Elizabeth, I would see her as an introvert. You know, like she seems very, but then I think that that is just like a royal type of um, expectation maybe, but she Reservation. Reservation, exactly. But remember for introvert versus extrovert, it's your energy source. And so you can, you know, be outgoing. You can be, you could be an outgoing introvert and you could be a shy extrovert. For much of my life, I've been a shy extrovert and- and but my I like get my energy from people. And so I can see mm-hmm. that's just, you know, but extroverts tend to be the ones that are, like you said, noticed with that external energy coming at you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Our last analyst is the debater, E N T P. So extrovert, intuitive, thinking, perceiving. Quick witted and audacious. Debaters aren't afraid to disagree with the status quo. In fact, they're not afraid to disagree with pretty much anything or anyone. (laughs) Aquarius. Few things light up people with this personality type more than a bit of verbal sparring. And if the conversation veers into controversial terrain, so much the better. It would be a mistake, though, to think of debaters as disagreeable or mean-spirited. Instead, people with this personality type are knowledgeable and curious with a playful sense of humor, and they can be incredibly entertaining. They simply have an offbeat, contrarian idea of fun, one that involves a heavy dose of spirited debate. That's Sagittarius. I I just see notes of like... a. Yeah, like the Gemini Sag axis. Gemini Sag axis, yeah. And Aquarius again. For sure. Debaters are known for their rebellious streak. For this personality type, no belief is too sacred to be questioned. No idea is too fundamental to be scrutinized. And no rule is too important to be broken or at least thoroughly tested. Sometimes debaters even rebel against their own beliefs by arguing the opposing viewpoint just to see how the world looks from the other side. So definitely out of the last two, we've gotten like devil's advocate energy yes. and totally sag aquarius that's a great it feels one. more fiery as we're getting into the extroverted mm-hmm. like piece yeah. here yeah because even though air signs are technically that extrovert energy they or they're externalizers they're not extroverts but they're externalizers they they put energy out there as opposed to processing it inside this the extrovert in the myers-briggs feels fiery it feels it um excitable yeah like passioned as debaters see it most people are too ready to do as they're told and blindly conform to social norms Mm -hmm. pressures and standards debaters enjoy the mental exercise of questioning the prevailing mode of thought and they take a certain pleasure in uncovering the value of underdogs and outliers aquarius man again like aquarius is the winner for this whole analyst yeah (laughs) yeah And then lastly, debaters are respected for their vision, confidence, knowledge, and keen sense of humor. 
But unless they cultivate a bit of sensitivity, they may struggle to maintain deeper relationships or even to achieve their professional goals. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like the debater out of all the analysts feels the least earthy. It feels the least like, okay, I have to grow up and do um, do something like I have to make, you know, I have to have some sort of success. You know, I need a shelter or whatever. It's like, no conversation feeds me uh entertainment fuels me i don't i don't need the earthly things i just want to have a good time and have good conversations you know when There's we were like talking responsibility yes when we talked about the intp it felt like the mercurial side of gemini and when we're talking about the entp it feels like we're talking about the airy side of gemini where it's like, you mm -hmm. know, we're very, okay, there's two personalities here. There's two sides to this. Both of these things can exist at the same time. So I'm debating both sides. I've got information on both of them. I appreciate the fun of this. I'm, it's not, it's not personal. I'm just going to jab a little bit more. Let's see. Cause I've got some information. And then everything that you were talking about with the, yeah. um, you know, entertaining and a bit of fun and not trying to be mm -hmm. disagreeable or mean spirited, but it's more like knowledgeable and curious. That feels like that Gemini Sagittarius aspect. This was the first one for me that that I really felt like could have some Sagittarius energy and that fire, like what yeah, we were talking totally. about, because because like a Sagittarius moon with that like philosophical, you know, emotional piece, which is basically the only placement I don't have Sagittarius in. But like that to me feels like they like, you know, they don't have to agree with what your philosophy is, but they really value that you yeah. share what your philosophy is and it feels like that spirit behind this yeah. again with the p this perceiving there's like a non-attachment to the philosophies that they're discussing yeah yeah it's just it's very postulating we've been liking that word oh p for postulating yes <laughs> i'm a postulator and so, <laughs> go on give us our, our uh, celebrities for these this is fun okay so like all right I used for the celebrities, I used the um, personality club.com for my sources of just celebrities uh, with like their Myers Briggs. And I went to another source and I X'd out of it because I was like, no, I'll tell you what, why I closed out of it was because the first source for ENTP, the first example they said was Satan. They said Satan was an ENTP. And I was like, we're absolutely it's kind of rude to all the other ENTPs. <laughs> we're absolutely adding that to notes because that's hilarious. And we're absolutely not using that source because what? But anyways, um <laughs> But I kind of like it archetypically. I like it like archetypically devil's advocate? too. Nah, the devil. The devil. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I also will yeah. say like just in like in like tarot, you know, how like the devil is a Capricorn card and it's like, oh, you know, it's so much more than that. So anyways, don't get too, don't get too attached to, uh, to Satan here, but I just had to throw it don't in there because I thought it was, yeah, don't get it twisted. Exactly. No. Um, we have Theodore Roosevelt, Thomas Edison, mm -hmm. Leonardo da Vinci. Benjamin Franklin, which just love, like that list already. These are such big very minds. Inventive, yeah. Yes, innovative. very inventive. Yeah. And also, how do they know Benjamin Franklin? Same as Alexander Hamilton. But like, I'm guessing they're going based on archetype, you know. Then we have Tom Hanks, Benedict Cumberbatch, Neil Patrick Harris, Amy Poehler, Ashton Kutcher, mm. Matthew Perry, rest in peace, and Weird Al Yankovic. Huh. I don't so, know anything about any of these personal lives. Yeah, I don't know personal lives, but I also do feel like all of these people are very, we see the extrovert, you know, these are people who, the only mm -hmm. one that I don't know, like, I just, because we've never like seen seen them alive it's like the like leonardo da vinci you know like i i didn't get the impression of that mm -hmm. from what i do know about him and even benjamin franklin i know that i feel like benjamin franklin is an extrovert in the way that the queen is an extrovert where it's like a reserved extrovert in that way but i see that they're like you could get down at a party benjamin franklin's my freaking favorite founding father we'll get into that another time that like just love but <laughs> <laughs> will we get into that another time i don't know but now everybody knows i don't knows think it. i have a favorite founding father <laughs> <laughs> i i taught fourth grade guys okay like i got like really into teaching about all anyways okay i i feel like with this group of people they are there's 
a, a more a level of silly and i mean amy poehler mm -hmm. ashton kutcher weird al you know tom hanks but then we have a serious part to all of them as well you know like i mean even neil patrick harris he plays like in these comedic movies and you know uh and tv series and yet he's playing a serious character in them he always plays the serious yeah to the silly you know and then even ashton kutcher yeah. is like often like being like he's an aquarius he's often goofy and everything and then he's like philanthropic as fuck and has all these like crazy outreaches to help yeah. people around the world you know and and even benedict cumberbatch he's you he is silly in his existence and yet he is such a serious energy to him too and so i feel like there's when we were talking about this archetype and we were talking about the you know this entp i don't feel like we got that same i don't know maybe serious it's it's a weird combo of serious and and not that I don't think I would have gotten yeah. if we didn't then see a list of celebrities, which is cool to then put a personality type on people that we've seen in action. Yeah. And there's like a care. There's there are causes behind a lot of these celebrities like Neil Patrick, even just even if they don't have like have founded charities like Ashton Kutcher did. Um, I mean, he also has been in the news for some reasons. But anyway, they're they all seem to be like spokespersons in a way yeah, you know like yeah. neil patrick harris was a very big spokesperson spokesperson for um speaking up about being publicly gay and yes um amy poehler is like a big spokesperson for being a woman in comedy ashton kutcher you know founded a lot of he, he put a lot of work into his philanthropic beliefs matthew perry was a big spokesperson for um addiction and alcoholism and and how to recover from that and stuff like that. So there's like a lot of uh, communicating and being active when it comes to their beliefs and um, and causes that they really can get behind. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and I would say the same for Tom Hanks too. He's, you know, mm -hmm. he, yeah, like just same for that energy. And I, it's interesting about this, you know, devil's advocate that we're talking about and the debater in general, but I feel like so many ways in which these particular celebrities have shown that debater, it's almost like if there's a public idea that is a certain way, they'll then come up and show the other side to it and because eyes are on them mm -hmm. and because there is respect behind them or at least you know the in the celebrities like people know them people follow them people like them and when it's them who decides to stand up and say something to the contrary of what maybe the social norm is mm -hmm. people are listening to that yeah 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 very fascinating this is really so we really have cool. it those are the analysts the first four of the Myers-Briggs personalities. So let us I know. Like also this. make sure that you go to our Google form and put in your chart so that, you know, we can use example charts. Um, or if you liked having celebrities, let us know and we'll include that on top of um, example charts. But yeah, I'm excited to keep going. I am excited to keep going. And I know you heard a little Discord uh, Patreon ad before, or maybe you skipped it, but don't forget to check us out on Patreon with that free trial that we have going on because we really do get farther into these type of discussions with our patrons over there and really dive into it and it's a good time. So check it out, patreon.com slash stars made me do it. Also, we forgot to plug ourselves once more at the beginning. Yes. Check us out on Instagram at the stars made me podcast. We're on TikTok at the stars made me podcast. And yeah, let us know. Don't forget that Google forum that you can find on our Instagram. And I'm excited for the next three parts. Yeah. So yeah. Sierra, why did we talk about the analysts today? Because the stars made us do it.